Measures of center tend to be a little more intuitive, I think just because we encounter those more in day-to-day -day life um, or in previous classes. For instance, if you were to ask someone what you think the average salary should be for a person going into your profession that you intend to go into, you, you have some ideas, you have some concepts there. You know, the difference between that being 70,000 and 120,000. Um, but when we get into measures of spread, I think this, these, these values can be a little bit less intuitive, um, just understanding what they mean. But the same idea applies that we had with measures of center. We can look at comparing them to see where spread is larger or smaller and start to you know, use that to give us a better idea of what these measures are telling us. We can start off with range. So to find the range of a data set, we take the largest data value in that data set, and we subtract out the smallest data set, or I'm sorry, the smallest data value. This can be a good measure of spread because it's very simple to calculate. And it's fairly easy to understand. But it has some downsides too. Um, for instance, it's sensitive to extreme values. One very large or one very small value can make that uh, range a lot larger than it might normally be. And it's based off only two data values. Meaning there's a lot of data that we collect that isn't factored into that result. So more or less we're ignoring it to come up with that measure. Standard deviation is generally considered to be a better measure of spread, though there are others besides just range and standard deviation, because standard deviation is going to factor in all of the data that we collected. But it's a more complicated concept to understand. The best way to summarize it is to say that standard deviation is the average amount of deviation from the mean. When we say deviation, we literally just mean how far does a particular value deviate from the mean, or how far away from the mean is it. On the number line below, we've got the data for violent crime that was reported while President Bush was in office. I have the mean indicated here. So the mean of this data is approximately 481.07. Now what we can do is pick any other data value and calculate how far away it is from that mean, that average value. We could start off with our smallest value here, which is 434.3. And what we want to do is just figure out how far this value is away from the mean. So we'll take that 434.3 and we'll subtract the mean of 481.07 to get a deviation of negative 46.77. So this data value is 46.77 units since it's negative below our mean. And if we repeated this process with, say, our second largest data value, 501.8, we're again just trying to find the difference or the distance between these two values. So we would take this data point minus the average to get a deviation of 20.73. OK, 
calculating standard deviation has a little bit more going on just, than just this, but essentially what we do is come up with all of those deviations. The deviation for every single data point, how far away it is from the mean, and average those deviations. So it's the average amount of distance between the mean and a given data value from that data set. Standard deviation, again, can be a little difficult to understand and interpret. It's not as natural as understanding averages and medians. But as a general rule, we can just keep in mind that when we have a larger standard deviation, we have more spread in our data, meaning the values are further apart from each other. And as we have a smaller standard deviation, then our data is more clumped together or closer together. We'll take a look at the data sets that we used in examples one and two, um, or sorry, examples two and three. And now instead of calculating the mean and the median, we'll look at calculating the range and standard deviation. Starting with the data from example two, which I've entered again into Desmos. We can calculate the range by taking the difference between the maximum and minimum value. So we'll type max of that first data set and then subtract the min to get 4.63. And then we'll do the same with the second data set, just subtracting the maximum value or subtracting the minimum value from the maximum value. to get a range under President Bush of 4.63 and under President Obama of 5.27. Based off these values, since the range is smaller under President Bush, we can say there was less variability in the unemployment rate under President Bush. So those numbers were closer together versus under President Obama. Those values were spread further apart. In example five, we want to look at calculating the standard deviation of the violent crime rates under each of these two presidents. I've updated my data in Desmos. So what we'll do is type in STD DEV, so short for standard deviation. And then in a set of parentheses, the data set that we want to calculate that for. Completing that for both data sets, we get approximately 22.32 and approximately 22.28. Based off these values, they are quite close, but there was more variability in the violent crime rate under President Bush than under President Obama, meaning the values were more spread out from each other. There was more variation from year to year in what that violent crime rate was. But it's important to notice with this case, if we had only rounded to a single decimal place, then we would have gotten 22.3 and 22.3 for both results. And that would suggest an equal amount of variability between those two periods.